Korea has come a long way from picking up the pieces following the horrific war that split the nation in two. Not only did this country rebound it miraculously to become one of the most prosperous nations in the world, it made the fastest transition from aid recipient to donor. Most noteworthy are food security assistance efforts. For our news features tonight, Oh jung sheds light on the past, present, and future of Korea's food assistance. With natural disasters and political instability, Afghanistan has approximately 10 million people who are food insecure. Malnutrition and stunted growth are the most prominent problems. To seek stronger support from the Korean government, Mick Lawrenson, the World Food Program country director in Afghanistan, made his way to Seoul. Seoul has been supporting the WFP's programs in Afghanistan since 2013 and is now the second largest donor. Mr. Lawrenson says the agency's joint project with Korea on soybeans has contributed greatly to improving local nutrition. Citizens are trained to grow soybeans, a crop common in Korea but not in Afghanistan, then harvested beans are used in various foods like naan bread or milk. Things like the um, soybean bread and the naan uh, has been accepted. They like the taste. Um, obviously, you do sampling. That seems to have worked very well. And, and as I learned yesterday at the Soybean Museum, there are many, many uses for soybean. So we're trying to introduce things gradually, given the protein, a high content of protein and fiber and everything else in there. It's a product that really does have a good use in Afghanistan. Korea's assistance also goes toward encouraging children to go to school to study and eat. Vocational training is provided for local women, and over 50,000 residents build vital infrastructure. So the idea is, it's not to be feeding a black hole all the time, the same people year after year. It's to find solutions that empowers uh, the beneficiaries, and then hopefully Afghanistan can become another South Korea of the future. Korea provides assistance to roughly 30 countries every year through the UN's Food Relief Agency. A major transformation for Korea, as it was once one of the agency's major recipients. From 1964 to 1984, Korea received World Food Program assistance worth over $100 million for over 20 programs nationwide. The Republic of Korea graduated from WFP assistance in 20 years, and in one generation, it became top 20 donor. This is a really remarkable feat. So, ROK is not only a donor, but actually achieved zero hunger. So, it sends out the message of hope to other countries. Zero hunger is indeed possible. South Korea has become one of the international community's major donor countries. And while most of its food assistance has been given through cash contributions, the Seoul government now hopes to go one step further and provide in-kind assistance to those countries in need. Seoul's agriculture ministry is planning to join the Food Assistance Convention, or the FAC, next year. The FAC is a 14-nation convention, including the U.S., the European Union, and Canada, that aims to promote global food security and provide humanitarian food assistance to developing countries. If the parliament approves the membership this year, Korea will ship 50,000 tons of rice next year, worth roughly 40 million U.S. dollars. It's expected to not only meet the most imminent global needs, but also alleviate domestic overproduction of rice. There were ups and downs in rice production before, but during recent years, we've seen constant oversupply of rice from 200 to 300,000 tons every year. So we see that there won't be shortage of rice even if we export some for food assistance. Korea now has the capacity. While Korea's assistance will be used for countries in emergencies, concerns remain about whether in-kind assistance is compatible with long-term development. It may rather bring down crop prices in local markets and thereby curtail earnings for local farmers. The side effect of giving in-kind food assistance is that the local economy may depend more and more on food from overseas. What's more practical is to discuss together with local authorities and come up with models on how to achieve economic and social development. Korea is very strong on that, too. It's been a long journey for South Korea since the mid-1900s to now become one of the world's largest economies. And what enabled that is not only Korea's own efforts for development, but support from the international community.
From food to technology to development experience, Korea has lots to share with the world. 오정이 아리랑 뉴스.